Well, we saw more devastating tornadoes and severe weather over the weekend. Also, some areas of the country that were in desperate need of rainfall ended up getting some meaningful precipitation. We're going to talk about all of this and take a look at the weather forecast here as we are nearing Memorial Day weekend coming up here next weekend. Let's talk about it with Eric Snodgrass from Nutrient Ag Solutions. Eric, good to catch up with you again here this week for our weekly weather update and I got to say, some of the images we saw from Kentucky, I know Kansas on Sunday night as well, more devastating, long track tornadoes, St. Louis as well, you know, throw St. Louis in there, just a, a lot of severe weather again here over the weekend, Eric. Yeah, and I don't think next weekend is going to look like this. Uh, so you mentioned Memorial Day, just something to think about. It's going to be cooler across much of the country and not nearly as kind of amped up as the last four days have been and how the next three days are going to be. So we go back to last Thursday where we had the severe weather outbreak, outbreak in the upper Midwest. Then Friday, it was across Illinois, Indiana, and then the Mid-South followed this, some of the tornadoes you talked about. By the way, where I am here in East Central Illinois, I saw something, I witnessed something I've never seen before, which was a haboob. That is basically outflow driven dust storm. And it started in East Central Illinois, went all the way to Chicago it was incredible to see the amount of dust and wind behind us. In fact, I'm still cleaning up my yard from all the tree damage that we had from these 70 mile an hour winds. Okay. We then got into Saturday, Sunday, and it was more severe weather and the atmosphere reloaded yesterday and hit, um, you know, hit parts of the Southern tier of the United States. And that's where the focus is going to begin today. But I was just talking to a friend of mine out in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he said, we just had million dollar rains in Nebraska. And I said, maybe billion dollar rains. I don't know. You look just at the last 24 hours and we filled in a hole in Nebraska that had not seen rainfall in some places getting on a month. They've had uh, pivot irrigation running for a while, but they had multiple rounds of storms last night. One spot in, in uh, Nebraska picked up over five inches of rain out of this. Now, that's a lot in a short amount of time, and one rainfall event does not break a drought. So I, we just have to be clear that there needs to be more coming in. But I have more rain coming into this area. But man, what a what a what a weekend! And then to watch it continue in the next three days, severe storms today. They're going to be in like parts of uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas. Then tomorrow again in the mid south and Ohio River Valley. Then on Wednesday over in the southeast, this pattern's been uh, it's been going. It has been going and it's something that, you know, to your point, you know, million billion dollar rains in Nebraska, even getting some of that up into the Western Dakotas where I know they could have used uh, some rainfall there. I, I mean, talk about as we move forward this week, you mentioned some of that severe weather in, in parts of the south, the southern tier of the U.S. What yeah. about the upper Midwest? I know the Northern Plains got a little bit of a slowdown here late last week with some meaningful rainfall. So what about some areas that still got to finish up planting kind of the northern tier of the country, Eric? Well, this will be interesting. I I, I wish I could just talk to some growers in the in the in Minnesota and the Dakotas because of this. Um, first of all, Minnesota has been one of our drier spots as well. And they got rain coming there. I was going to get rain, Wisconsin, Illinois. It's all getting rain. There's there's big push coming through now. On the back side of this system in North Dakota, I've got the European model, the GFS, and the NAM all putting down some snow. Mm. Uh, it's overnight. It'll melt quickly, but it'll be cold enough to get some, uh, possibly some snowflakes falling and mixed in with some of this rain. And we do have frost that's going to hit parts of Dakotas, make it all the way down to central Nebraska. Now, frost events, we have to just be careful. You touch 32 before dawn, you don't have crop damage, right? I mean, it's cold, but the, the, the plant can handle that. It's if you get down to like 28 and it's like that for two, three, four hours that you have major, major crop problems. And I, I, I'm not seeing that. OK, but uh, there's some pretty cold air that's going to be coming in on the back side of this. this is going to last all the way through next weekend. But in between, we got rain. We have rain coming into some key areas and uh, it's going to have to you know, buy us some time getting into this month of June. Well, and thinking about getting into June, I want to talk about this a little bit more with you is uh, something that you and I have been discussing really since we turned the calendar over to 2025. And that's this potential for drought in the Western Corn Belt and the Plains yeah. as we get into the summer growing season. So talk about some of the latest that you are tracking with this potential and really what needs to happen here uh, in order to see, you know, this drought happen or not happen essentially yeah so the, the national weather service updated and it gave us this map last week they also gave us our new seasonal forecast and they're trying to put the driest conditions in july and august 
in Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and the eastern side of the Dakotas. And we're looking at that going, all right, what would it take for that to happen? Or for the map we're looking at right now, which is the U.S. seasonal drought outlook, for that drought development likely color to actually be there. All right. And so here's what we have to have. We have to have low momentum in the atmosphere. We have to have drought already established. We've got to get colder water to show up along the west coast of North America. And it's in places right now, but we're missing one key thing, okay? And if you want to have just epic, like I'm talking 88, 2012, you know, the big year drought in the Western Corn Belt, uh, for actually the whole Corn Belt, there's one thing that's missing. And if you show this next image, Jesse, I'm going to make a point here. What I'm saying is this, all of those really, really dry years, they were dry in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. They were dry in that area in spring. They say, well, why does that matter? Well, if you get into summer and you're looking at transport of Gulf moisture into the Midwest, it's got to go over the Mid-South in the Southern Plains and the lower Mississippi River Valley first. Now, if you've got rain and moisture in that area in spring, then what you don't have is a big void or deficit in the atmosphere, such that by summer, when the flow goes over the top of it, that region steals the moisture in every major corn belt drought. I'm talking about the big ones, the multi-month terrible ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were dry already in the mid South. You were dry in the Southern Plains. We're just not there. So this map says what has to happen for big time Western U S excuse me, forgive me, Western corn belt drought. Uh, we don't have it. That's April and May of those composite years. So it could take something else. And what I'll be watching, and this is kind of our 40-day assignment, it's between now and the beginning of July. It's crazy to think that July is like, what, 40 days away, mm -hmm. uh, is getting the really cold water in the Gulf of Alaska, which is symptomatic of the atmosphere, shoving the jet stream north and losing momentum. That's We're, we're, starting, to, we're starting to see things that have me less aggressive on this major drought story. Now, here's what's crazy, Jesse. It's it's the end of May. Mm -hmm. All of this can change in the next two to three weeks. I could go from a narrative today where I'm like, hey, you know, there's worry about drought, but why are we not being able to check, uh, check all of the boxes? And then in three weeks, I'm like, oh, all boxes are checked. Like, here we go. Let's go. It's on. Or in three weeks from now, I could be like, where is it? What's happening? And that's what goes on in late May into early June. Probably the most important conversation you and I will have about Corn Belt drought will be one month from now. Literally a day before the, uh, the, 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 the summer solstice, we'll see if these things have come together. But I'll just finish with this, Jesse. Else around the world, new long range models released late last week are trying to put dry conditions in the Western Corn Belt to Montana and in the Black Sea. And if markets are looking for a weather story and those two things manifest themselves at the same time, then we could, I mean, it could go crazy, but I'm just going to say this. Do not put your faith in a forecast right now, especially from me or anybody else, to be honest with you, uh, because we have got too many moving pieces and not all the boxes are currently being checked. So we'll just watch it together and talk every Monday. That is a great reminder and plenty of things for us to track over the next month plus. Eric, I should ask you real quick, South America uh, looked like some rains in Argentina. Maybe some potential flooding is uh, what we're hearing, and some of that's snuck its way up to southern Brazil, but it doesn't seem like a lot has made its way into Brazil here, Eric. No, and, and remember, the Brazilian monsoon is down is done, uh, but they finished the season with good rains, which was not a good forecast on my part. I thought they'd finish dry, but they didn't. Uh, so NDVI values were high on that Sabrina crop. We were dry in Argentina, dry in southern Brazil until this recent precipitation came through. But remember, it's, you know, it's mid to late autumn down there. And uh, yes, they have an entirely different growing season, but I don't imagine that much attention is going to be paid to it from a market perspective. I think all the focus is going to be on the Northern Hemisphere going forward. All right. Well, I know if folks want to stay on top of the weather, they can go to your website, agweather.com, ag-wx.com for more information. Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions, always good to talk with you, sir. Have a great weekend and look forward to talking to you next week. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks, Jesse.